From the kitchen to the cabin and around the world, this is Voices from the Solitude, a podcast about the coronavirus and gaming. Today, I'm talking to Shaz from Settlers Games Cafe. We talk about how much of a wrench it is closing the doors. So I'm here with Shaz from Settlers Games. Now I'm rather embarrassed. I was, I was, I was going to try and pronounce your full name, but then you said it to me, and I, I thought there's, there's not a hope in hell. So if you'd like to first of all introduce yourself to the listeners and overcome my linguistic ignorance. Sure. No, no, it's listeners, totally no problem. Um, I'm Shaz, um, also known as Shaheen Savarnijad, um, but everyone calls me Shaz, so that's totally fine. Um, I own and manage Settlers, which is a games and comic book cafe in Hamilton, which is in South Lanarkshire, which is about 15 minutes away, 20 minutes away from Glasgow. Um, and so why why start a board game cafe what was what was the reason what's your history as a gamer because i assume you know people who aren't gamers wouldn't enter this business because i can't imagine that you're going to walk away a millionaire at the end of this yeah you're absolutely right um i mean i we started back in 2014 and um at the time uh, i had come back from being abroad i was teaching abroad and i've come back in about 2012 and at the time we're still suffering you know it, economically and everything in the country and uh, I was a tabletop gamer uh, I have been tabletop gaming for quite some time now I got into tabletop games through uh, back in a long long time ago when I was a kid through Hero Quest and other games workshop sort of titles um, and board games and things like that and um, from there uh, I decided um, I, I came back from being abroad and figured to myself why are games in a downturn? Why are comics in a downturn? Um, I was surprised to see that there are less and less games clubs and things opening up, at least in my local area. So um, in 2012, I set out to change that. Um, I created a couple of games clubs, um, Lancashire Gamers being one of them um, in the local area. And then after I saw the the huge demand for games, I figured, well, um, the job market's not great right now. Um, Why don't I just try this myself? You know, why don't I give it a shot? So um, we, we create, I created Settlers um, with the aim for people to, to be a community, to literally settle down. Um, the other kind of hidden meaning in that name, of course, is, is, is an homage to Settlers of Catan because it did so much for uh, bringing tabletop games to the forefront. And um, the third kind of reason was, you know, as I've intimated, it, my life itself was kind of unsettled and I wanted to, to really come back home, settle down and, and build a career for myself. So um, while it's not the most uh, sort of, it's not the, the biggest mm-hmm. get rich quick scheme, you know, if I wanted to do that, I would go into another industry. And um, that's not the purpose for me. The purpose for me is to to give um, things to me that maybe I didn't have when I was younger and also to, to grow gaming and to grow um, the community um, around these subcultures um, and to, to give people something that maybe they, they never had access to. Um, I was lucky enough, you know, to, to know people who were into this stuff, um, but I don't feel that that's the case for everyone. And I feel um, the, the, one of the best ways to access that is to have a literal standard there, a literal flag um, on the high street um, that you can walk into or walk out of to try. And, and so I've got a twofold question here. So, so firstly, what do you think that, you know, Settlers offers to the local community and Secondly, what does it give you? Because it, it seems to me that this is this is very much a passion, right? Sure. Um, for the community, I think um, there's a tendency. I mean, anyone can say that they are pro fun, um, and you can get fun from a lot of different things. You know, you can go get drunk and and, and cause trouble, and that that might be considered fun, but not any productive. Um, communal sort of nice way where you work together and you grow each other um, I think as well um, our shop gives a access point to people who don't necessarily have something um, we have customers who have maybe don't necessarily um, 
socialize elsewhere. They socialize at Settlers. So it's their place to meet and um, generate their friends. Their whole friend circle is generated by our store. And we're, we're delighted to, to be a part of that um, because, you know, our customers as well, a lot of them we consider friends as well. And that's that's just a byproduct of, of what we do. That wasn't necessarily intention. Uh, and if anything, I'm, I'm a little bit guilty of being standoffish in terms of, of professionalism. Sometimes I'm, I'm too professional um, in that sense, um, whereas, um, you know, other stores are, are maybe more focused on that friendly element and being um, a friend or uh, shoulder um, for other people uh, who, who come into their store. So that, that certainly wasn't an intent. Um, but it's certainly been a byproduct of what we've done. And that's that's really warming and, and heartening to see. And, and we do try to celebrate that and point that out to people um, through our advertising and, and through, um, you know, little celebrations, you know, little posts, reminders that, you know, how far we've come and things like that. With regards to your second question um, about what I get out from it, um, there's there's a number of things. I mean, naturally, I mentioned uh, about building a career, and every day I'm I'm learning in this industry. Um, I mean, pre pre COVID, uh, I was continually learning. I, I joke about spinning all the plates because th that's what I do. You know, I, I spend a lot of time doing different jobs and and jumping from project to project to project. So. That for me is very exciting. Um, I like that kind of intensity, that that full onness um, of um, that in my work. Um, I have very sort of uh, I, I, if I get idle hands, that's very bad for me, you know. Um, so, uh, you know, having uh, having a lot to do um, in this industry and a lot to learn and a lot a lot of room to grow is is really rewarding for me. Um, seeing other people do the same um, whether they are staff or customers um, and you do you do see believe it or not you do see um, customers grow which I don't think you necessarily get in other industries um, except maybe perhaps teaching or, or something like that um, so that to me is very rewarding as well and although as you mentioned I mean it's, it's pretty common knowledge at this point that it's not the most monetarily rewarding career um, I, that's, that's not what does it for me. Um, as long as I can, can get by. I'm pretty happy, and so going on from that, then, you know, people have had to close down their businesses. What was the, what was the process of, of shutting the doors in settlers for you? And how much of a wrench was that? Um, it's, it's more of a fear factor. Um, it's, it's very scary because the biggest chunk of our business comes from bums on seats and, and people, uh, being in the store so the the first part of covid when it first hit um was deciding whether or not to cancel and close the doors we i'm doing my best not to get political here but we, there was no hard and fast line to draw um that, that we were told you need to shut it was, it was very much down to the business and i think now the right thing to do generally you know, has, has been put out there whether you should or should not be open. But there's still no legal clause really telling me not to open. Um, I could, for example, stay open and, and under the guise that um, we're selling takeaway food, uh, which we don't do and probably wouldn't reward us because we want people to come in and play games and, and, and experience each other's good company. Um, so... That was tricky at first as well, and I think it was. I think we're on day eleven now, if I'm not mistaken, um, of of our closure. So that that was tricky in the first instance. Once we did close, the um, there were a lot of uh, one of the best things about this industry as as an owner. One of my f things I love is that we all talk to each other. Um, we're all very in it together, uh, together, and we've always been in it together. And when I say we, I mean you know game store owners and comic store owners. We all talk to each other. So there were guides that people had made saying, this is what I'm doing to close down my store. Um, here's a little checklist. There you go. And so you could run down checklists that other people have been made or make your own and then share them with each other and close things down that way. And that took us, I want to say, about half a day, in all honesty, um, with regards to just the physical store closure, getting money out the building, any valuables out the building, and making sure that everything was off uh, and things like that. So the physical side of things wasn't too difficult, to be brutally honest. But 
there is an anxiety there um, that, that I think we all face and are all collectively facing, not just the store owners, but everyone, but particularly so for store owners because, um, you know, we're hearing stories of some stores getting looted. Um, we're, we, we've seen smashed windows and things like that for people coming in trying to nick charity boxes of all things. Um, so there, every day, you know, you wake up thinking, God, what's next? Um, what do we do? Um, and that's, I think, in the first week in particular, hit me really hard. Um, I just didn't have much purpose to do much in the first week, if I'm, I'm brutally honest. Um, but now I've kind of rallied myself a little bit um, with a lot of help from, you know, not just family and friends, but also our customers. Our customers are fantastic. Um, and again, that's another really rewarding, powerful thing about this industry where you have those connections from people to, to help you through times like this and help each other through times like this, even remotely. Um, even though the physical space isn't there, you know, the, the settler's mindset is, is there in people, our customers. Uh, hearts and minds and you know we're all looking after each other which is is, is fantastic you know I, I, so what can we do in the community as gamers to help people like you who run the shops who run the cafes i think communication is key in the first instance at least from from our perspective um some stores are running online events you won't know about them unless you're communicating so communicate communicate with what your store wants from you, your store may want to run online stuff, um, whether it's um, you know card game events run online, which different card game um, manufacturers are working towards. Whether it's um, they want to sell you product like painting for miniature gamers, your miniature gamers can support uh, stores that way. Um, whether it's just talking to each other, but I think the key point that comes back to whatever game, uh, whatever type of gamer you are, is to communicate with your store listen to what they're the, the, the information sources they're putting out whether that's social media or whether it's um, on advertising channel other advertising channels are using I would simply start by listening um, if you want to keep that relationship going absolutely keep it going by listening talking feeding back and just keeping that dialogue going um, so for example in our case uh, we've been working towards a website for quite some time now and um, we're now that we've had some free time due to, to all this happening, we've been able to, to actually get it on the go. So in the meantime, we're pushing people to an online sort of um, model where we're telling people, we've got a sale, here's our products, you can buy from us in the interim, but then there will be a website rolled out shortly. And that communication, you know, our customers are asking us, when's the website coming? When's the website coming? And that's that's really supportive and, and good news for us because it makes us believe, you know, that there is life after COVID. There is there is something that's going to happen after this, despite the difficulties that we're facing. And I imagine that different stores are, are dealing with that differently um, in different manners, um, whether it's through an online presence or, or whatnot. But they ultimately, it's up to them to communicate to you how they want to help you. So in short, just listen to them, you know, listen to them, communicate, um, tell them what you want um, and keep that, that flow, that relationship going. Brilliant. Well, hopefully the, the uh, self-isolation doesn't drive you too crazy and hopefully we all come out of this on the other side, <laughs> having learned something and, and you know, Absolutely like none of us then. are in the workhouse. So Shaz, thank you very much for uh, spending your time today. No, thank you, Ben. If you want to support content like this, you can go to patreon.com forward slash 5 g for d Thank you for listening. Stay safe. And if you can, stay at home.